Hi, this is Gilles, the Radio Prepper. I got a box in the mail. I love when that happens, especially when I'm not expecting it. And this is from Joe in Oregon. Sent me two tuner kits from the Four State QRP group. So Joe, thank you very much. You are awesome. This is great. The manual claims it will tune practically any antenna. Now that's a bold claim, but eh, these guys know what they're doing. So I'm going to assemble them. I won't show you the whole build. There's no point in doing that. It's a fairly easy kit, except maybe for the inductance, which is switchable and uh, goes here on top of the switch. The toroid goes on top of the switch and you have to wind the turns around it. And that might not be so easy, so I might just film that and show it to you. But First step is to identify lug number four. So with the center lug here on top, I will count one, two, three, four. Mark it. There are two ways to wire the inductor, and I decided to have the most inductance at position L. The first step is to connect the common lug here in the center to this pad because later you won't have the space to do it. I decided to use uh, insulated wire instead of the uh, bus wire provided so uh, just to avoid shorts. The bus wire is connected to this pad here and will go between lug 4 and 5 so I will use some uh, heat shrink tubing here. Now I'll put the wire through the uh, toroid and slide it down. And it will rest here on top of the selector. The first turn goes around the toroid from the inside through lug number four and back out from the center. And I'm going to have to make three turns here. Make sure the wires don't touch because this wire here is bus wire and it's not insulated. So here are the first three turns that go through the first three lugs. After that it's going to be two turns per lug. Turn number four doesn't go through the lug but it goes in between. You have to make sure it doesn't touch the other wires. This one's going to be soldered, of course, on this lug. It's number one. I repeated the operation until I was done with all the turns, and uh, now I have to make sure that they don't touch each other. If I had some hot glue, I would put it around here to avoid uh, the wires moving. And here are the uh, completed kits. It is fairly uh, mechanically sound. I like the uh, idea of having a circuit board. Now, uh, the only problem I have with it is the uh, antenna connectors. Uh, those are fairly fragile. You have to be uh, gentle with them. Otherwise, this kit is fairly easy. There are few components and very few opportunities to mess up. Quick test uh, before I take one outside. It seems to operate fine. I put the switch on out, which means operate. And I search for the loudest noise. And here it seems to be on E. Then I turn the left capacitor, it seems to be around 4 and okay, about here. So here is where I get the most noise. Then I go to in and I'm going to key the transmitter. And I'll play with the uh, capacitors until I get the least amount of brightness out of the red LED. So the red LED ideally should be uh, practically out. And it's not bad. You can see here that the uh, green LED is much brighter than the red one and that's what you want. Then I place the switch back on out and I'm ready to operate. I can't help but compare the 4S tuner to the uh, ZM2 tuner which I've had for a while. Performance wise I'm not quite sure which one will be the best one, only experience will tell me that. But I can uh, tell you that uh, the ZM2, for instance, doesn't have a PCB. So it's a little bit of a mess in the case. I like the 4S tuner because it does have a PCB and everything is mounted on it. 
The only problem I have with it is that, the uh, again, the uh, BNC connectors are more fragile than the ZM2. Both, I am sure, are good choices. Size-wise, the uh, 4S tuner might be slightly smaller than the ZM2, but not by much. So really, it's a toss-up. Have a good one.